I'm going to talk uh, here today uh, about a couple different things. I wear uh, two different hats, and so we're going to talk about what Norfolk is doing and considering a community solar uh, project. Uh, Nicole did a nice job of laying out uh, what that is and what that means for communities. Um, I'm in my second year as mayor, and really the reason that we're interested in pursuing this is it's good for our local economy. And uh, we are in the middle of a great deal of renewable ener energy generation happening in our state right now. And so we're always looking for opportunities to supplement that. Community Solar is one of those programs as an MPPD customer uh, we can, in which we can do that. And so I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, this proposed project. Uh, you may have seen in the news that uh, we are pursuing this uh, through MPPD. Now, um, that's not big news in itself. Uh, this program has been around for a while, and there's been successful models established in um, Scotts Bluff and Venango and Kearney, and I think Mayor Klaus is here, and he has been helpful uh, to us uh, providing input as we walk through this, this process. Um, but the, the wrinkle here with Norfolk's project is the potential tie-in with a uh, battery storage component. And NPPD came to us um, a few weeks back and said, we have this idea uh, that could potentially work uh, through grant funding through the Nebraska Environmental Trust Fund in which you uh, apply for a grant and um, this up to one megawatt uh, battery storage project could be tied into uh, what you're talking about uh, with your solar project. So we'll talk a little bit about some of the details there. And the attractiveness uh, to me in this is that this would allow Norfolk to not only um, supplement or integrate some renewables into our, our generation portfolio, but also be out in front on battery storage. Um, mentioned, again, this is the program that uh, uh, Scotts Bluff and Corny have uh, have integrated. Um, the timeline on this is fairly quickly. Uh, it, RFPs would be set to go out mid-November, the latest I've heard, November 15th. Um, and we would seek proposals for a project of two different sizes. We could go up to eight and a half megawatts. Um, we'd like to also size out a six megawatt project uh, we have city-owned property identified uh, for the solar array. We have 70 acres of city well fields just west of town, right off West 275. Um, the, the area works well, it's flat as a pancake, city owns it, uh, can't really, as, as it's well fields, can't build, be developed for anything else. Um, again, timeline would be by the end of uh, 2019. And so, uh, this is, the, this is the area to kind of give you a little bit of an idea of what we're talking about. There is, uh, this is as you approach Norfolk uh, from the west, this is coming right into town. So there's some, some visual impact and uh, public awareness uh, value uh, and education to this too. Um, I also want to talk a little bit about Renewable ener energy generation as an economic growth catalyst uh, for our region. Um, I've engaged here uh, in the last couple of months uh, on a project called New, P New Power Nebraska. Uh, we are a statewide advocacy effort that works with the American Wind Energy Association to essentially tell the story of the wind industry in Nebraska. Um, this is, as you can see, I feel like uh, uh, I'm preaching to the choir here. A lot of you already know this, but these are the existing wind projects in the state. As you can see, northeast and north central Nebraska are really at, at the heart of where a lot of development already exists and new projects are coming online. And what does this mean for us um, as a as a community, as a um, local and regional economy. Wind has been a very quiet 
two and a half billion dollar investment since the first wind farm began operations in Nebraska some uh, 10 to 15 years ago. Um, new jobs in rural places. Since 1998, more than 900 operational phase jobs. Today, more, about 150 good paying jobs uh, in communities like Elgin and Petersburg, O'Neill, Allen. Um, 15 to 20 jobs in these communities is a big deal, and these are good paying jobs uh, to the average of you know, 55 to $65,000 a year. And another benefit is that uh, these are jobs that uh, our local graduates of uh, Northeast Community College can take. Northeast Community College is, has the only wind energy uh, training program in the state as of right now. And um, I think it started about 10 years ago. And over the co course of those years, we've been sending graduates uh, all over the country uh, to work. We have the opportunity now to keep those kids here, in fact, uh, there's, there's some Northeast students here today and, and instructors uh, representing that program. So that's, that's a big deal for us in Norfolk and Northeast Nebraska. The construction impact of wind farms is significant and it doesn't often get talked about enough. Um, currently in Northeast Nebraska, we estimate there's at least 400 um, wind construction workers working on various projects in the area. And what that means for us is that on a random Tuesday night in Norfolk, you can't find a hotel room. Um, our sales tax revenues in Norfolk have increased by an average of 12 to 13 percent in the last four months. Um, I went back and asked staff to pull the figures historically over the last three, three to four year period. And during that time, if you had a three to four percent um, increase in a month, that was a big deal. So these are, these are big numbers, and a lot of it really has to do with uh, the, the wind construction that's happening in our area. The workers who are staying in town, who are eating in a restaurant, shopping, it's, it, it's a big deal. New farm income in a time of low commodity uh, prices, uh, this can't be overstated how important uh, these land lease payments are uh, for farmers. We have the opportunity now to produce energy as efficiently as we do food. And um, the ethanol industry did a good job of um, uh, in, in for, reinforcing the message that our farmers are energy producers as well. And we have that opportunity in, in wind and need to tell that story. New tax revenues, um, almost $10 million now annually in uh, new local tax revenues in counties across Nebraska. It's helping communities grow. Uh, O'Neill, where Nicole is from, um, has seen uh, the impact of that up close and personal. O'Neill is going through um, a, a school expansion project right now. and. Um, I believe it's, it's not a bond issue, it's being paid for, and it's being, a lot of that money's coming from uh, wind uh, farm taxes. And that's helping alleviate the property tax burden. You hear about property taxes um, ad nauseum in this state, and one way to uh, relieve some of the burden on property owners is, is growth. And we don't, believe it or not, have a lot of tangible opportunities for growth in rural Nebraska. This is one that we have in abundance. Um, the potential we have in this state uh, to utilize wind as a catalyst for creating new jobs, new, new farm income, and growing our local economy is huge. And you can see, this is one of my favorite maps. You see just how much potential Nebraska has to grow in, in this industry. And it's exciting to me as both a local elected official and someone who now works within this industry to see the level of interest and in new development in Nebraska. Um, this is an opportunity to create energy in our own backyard. And we don't use water doing it. It doesn't pollute. And you can farm around it. So. There's, there's a need, I think, for us to, to not be afraid to tell the story of what 
wind is doing for our rural places and the opportunity, opportunities that it presents. New Power Nebraska uh, is, a, again, a, um, an effort that is affiliated with the American Wind Energy Association and really a big part of our mission is to tell the story of the benefits of wind production. Uh, you often hear when projects come up um, a lot of misinformation about what wind is and what it does. Uh, some of what we do is arrange uh, visits to wind farms for local elected officials. And it's, we find that it's important for uh, local elected officials who may not be familiar with the industry to see and hear for themselves uh, what wind energy is and how it works. Um, they're a lot less subject to believe some of the misinformation that, uh, uh, that uh, is thrown at them if they have that personal experience. So I think I'll stop there, probably taking my time, and I think we're taking some questions. Thank you.